right, so I am so excited. Thank you all for tuning in to this Black Home Education podcast by me, Pamela Smith. Many of you guys know me from Instagram or TikTok, where I encourage Black families to homeschool. I have been homeschooling for 15 years and graduated um, two daughters so far with three more to go. And this podcast is all about empowering Black families who decide to homeschool. You know, we also talk about other options in Black education, like micro schools. So I hope that you enjoy, enjoy um, being a part of this podcast. Please remember to subscribe. It helps this channel out so much to like, share, subscribe, tell everybody about it. You know what? Pam is now podcasting. Pam is on YouTube. You know, we get these little snippets on social media that, you know, I don't have a lot of time. Reels is like 90 seconds. This is the time where you get to hear me out. So please subs um, consider subscribing and liking and sharing because and commenting. All of that helps help me to continue to be able to do this. Today, I am honored to have my sister on my very first episode. I know Tracy from South Florida. We work together at my homeschool center. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit later here, but I want to introduce you, introduce the world to this amazing woman. So Tracy, tell us about a little bit about you and what you do, um, your credentials, your background. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. First, before I say one word, I just want to thank you so very much for empowering our community, enlightening us. As a whole, I can say we are all very appreciative and very grateful for the work that you do. You are amazing. And I just thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Tracy Wiley. And I am a speech, behavior, and developmental therapist. I've been in this field for over 20 years now. And I am just so happy to be able to go into homes and communities and share the gift that God has given to me. Awesome. I am, yes, I'm just so excited and I'm ready to serve in any manner I can. All right. So the reason that I was led to have you come on this podcast was because you're awesome. Number one to the viral video. Can we just jump into the viral video where oh. an African-American family, it said in the description that the child was having, has some uh, severe ADHD and their son, who looked to be 10 years old, the parents called the cops and the cops came into the home and restrained the, the little boy all while the, the, the parents were filming and they handcuffed him behind his back. And everyone, everyone in my comment section was upset. And I said, OK, I got to contact Tracy because I know this is your field. What? Tell me first, what was your reaction when you saw that? My first reaction was like being a deer staring in the face of cars coming right at me with my eyes froze. I was like, I couldn't speak. I was so upset at what I was seeing. I thought, you, this is not happening. This was just the most horrible thing that could happen to any individual person with unique abilities. I yes. can tell you it was horrible. That was my first reaction. What in a situation like that, because there's a lot of families watching right now. I have talked with countless families um, about special needs, homeschooling or just special needs kids and black families. What would have been the more appropriate thing for the family to have done? Awesome. That's a great question. So the first thing I noticed is there was a snippet of this video. So as a behavior analyst, the first thing we'll say is what was happening before the cameras actually started rolling? Um, what was the precursor? What 
actually got all of this behavior going in the first place. And so for me, I would have been wanting to know what the warning signs, you know, what were our signs that we were getting escalated to a point where we thought we need to call the police? Um, because obviously this little boy, poor thing, he was restrained in a way in which he really shouldn't have been. And we, I know we'll get more into that in a little bit, but the safety uh, skills that we normally would put in place were just not there. Um, number one, there are a way, there is a, a better way that he could have been restrained. Um, handcuffs would not have been a choice at all. Uh, we would have used weighted blankets, um, maybe for his arms and legs. These are resources that parents have available to them uh, to use. The police did not come equipped with any of these resources. Um, and I thought, oh, wow, they have him on the floor. They're dragging him. And he didn't display any behavior that would have showed that he was a danger to himself, which would have been like headbutting, biting. He wasn't endangering anyone else. So for him to be handcuffed, something must have happened before this video started rolling. And so that's that's the thing. It's like, I we've seen these things play out so many times. We've seen it play out so many times where um, someone is having a mental breakdown. Typically black, we've seen a lot of videos recently where black men were having a mental crisis. And actually I just shared a video the, um, two nights ago where a, a um, young lady was talking about her brother who was having a suicidal moment and the cops were called. And yeah. the cops, instead of taking him into the hospital to be evaluated, um, the cops left him. So then they got called again. And then the cops unalived this young man because he, you know, he did have a, a, a weapon and they're going back and forth on whether he shot the weapon or whatever. But his his life is no longer here because the cops didn't do what they told the family they were going to do the first time, which was take him to the hospital. And so do you feel like they really cops should be they should be partnering with people that have these skills like you, like partnering with agencies that can go on these calls with them? Yes. Yeah, so um, the first my first thought was. Why are we calling the police? We have a very great team um, here in the state of Florida. Uh, social, we could have just simply got on the phone, called the behavior analyst that may be attached to the case, or someone that was trained in verbal or nonverbal de escalation skills and techniques. I did not hear not one attempt to de escalate the situation by using any verbal prompts. They could have offered him some of his preferred items. It could We could have used food. We could have used anything that he loved to do as an activity. I heard not one strategy come from anyone that were participating. All I know is the parents were requesting that he basically be restrained. No one offered him any help, any tips. There was not one strategy to de-escalate the situation. He did not seem to me like a child that was out of control. He didn't seem like he was, he was being drugged. You know, they, they had to drag him, but he wasn't kicking. He wasn't biting. He wasn't screaming. He wasn't so out of control where we needed to really put him on a sensory mat without ex Seedingly offering him some techniques and strategies first. So first, I think we need to get our agencies together and do some training. We don't need yeah. to call the cops all the time. Um, the first, my first thought was, we're the social workers. We're the behavior analysts. Who, who are providing services for this family? Like, are they really alone? Because it, I know that at this point, if he's, at least 10 years old, maybe, maybe not, but someone has to have some type of registration of this particular documented uh, unique disability. Yeah, so what I heard, what just really stood out to me, 
Tracy, was when you said strategies. You know, the family needs strategies. And these strategies can be found, found through, you know, as you said, you know, the agencies, the social workers, people in our community, um, behavioral analysts, you know, strategies. And so on that note, I have a lot of families that are watching this that homeschool, some homeschool, some don't. Um, if a child has a special needs, what is the first step for parents? Like, how do they find help? Where can a family find help? Yes. So I'm a provider for the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. That is our state's largest resource. So I would say to them to definitely um, Google APD, Agency for Persons with Disabilities. They have a wealth of resources in our state. And even if you're in another state, if you put in Agency for Persons with Disabilities, no matter what state you come up, it's going to pop up. I would say please get registered because then you can attend free resources like seminars. You can um, tap into the agency's providers and get some help. Uh, we need we need to send people to where they can get help. And providers that like behavior therapists, they're going to be able to help in any situation that retains behavior situations such as this. But I wanted to say this. We as behavior therapists would never restrain a child that doesn't need to be restrained. That child is not not only probably scared or stressed, but will this will have a, a lasting impact on his psychological yeah. mindset. So yeah. I, I'm so sad for him right now. I really am. And I do think that they need to do a better job in making sure that they get some help from him. For he's going to, he may even be a little bit leery of police officers in the future, which we definitely don't need in this right. population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the criminalization of black men, you know, and, and, and that I think about the school to prison pipeline and how a lot of stuff happens in the school, you know, and to have a parent to actually call the cops at home. Yes. I can understand if it was absolutely necessary, but I mean, from I wanted to bring you in as an expert because I'm not an expert in that field, but to be able to hear it from you that, you know, there, there was other options available, you know, instead of, you know, cops and cops are not trained to do these things, you know. They are not trained to do these things. As a matter of fact, I have uh, many clients that have had the police called on them before and I'm sitting wondering why. And so I'll just give you a very short example of what this looks like. So I did have a client that um, was riding in a car and decided that he would just jump out of the car and start running in the middle of the street. Um, the police were called. The police harassed my client by throwing him into the back of their police car, you know, with handcuffs, um, did not listen to any instructions that was coming from the parents. So there was a miscommunication in some way where how are we dealing with populations who may not understand social cues and that's where social skills training come in. And when the agency shows up and don't understand that, it can cause further escalation where it could become very violent, where my client could have almost been killed by the police because they didn't understand that this child had autism. Mm. And so all they saw him as someone wildly running through the streets and throwing things. And so he literally almost could have been um, in very cruesome danger because they had resorted to withdraw their guns, but instead mom is yelling and yelling and yelling, please don't, please don't. You know, my son has autism, my son has autism, but they were so hyped that they just grabbed them and handcuffed them and threw them in the back of the car before they even knew 
the full story. Yeah. And so cops need, they need training, you know, yes. and, and, and I have to say that because I often say they have training, but they choose not to use it on African Americans in this country. Um, but I do believe they need further education on special needs, children and, and adults, and, you know, so that they are not criminalized for having a medical, you know, condition, you know, a, a, a not so much medical, but more psychological um, condition. So I, I want to jump into our connection. This is how I want to tell you guys how Tracy and I connected. Um, Tracy and I worked together in South Florida at my homeschool center. And um, she had her own business that she was running out of my, out of my particular center. But how we came together was the fact that I was getting a lot of parents coming in with children on the spectrum. And I was having to turn away a lot of families because we did not have the training, the staff, the people there who could properly assist the, the children that were kind of high up on that spectrum. So when um, the Lord brought us together, it was, it was just destiny because it was like, now, I can send these kids over to her, you know, so that she could work with these families. And she has experience working with home kids in the home, kids that are being homeschooled that have special needs. And the way it helped us was, for example, we had the one gentleman, and I know you know who I'm talking about, but he came into the program. And I remember one day, Tracy, he was having a mental not a mental breakdown. Give me the right word for that. Not mental breakdown. He was having a meltdown. meltdown. Um, I remember <laughs> that. Yes. He was, he having, was a having a meltdown. Yeah. yeah. And so he he was in the kitchen and he was balled up on the floor. And I called Tracy. I'm like, Tracy, what do we, you know, help us walk us through it. And so Tracy was able to tell me, you know, how to handle that. She was able to talk to him on the phone. And everything was okay. We got through the rest of the day. And so she was able to take a lot of our students and, and, and help them to be able to come into our program because she was doing those behavioral therapy things with them, the social, helping them develop those social skills to be able to come into our program. And so I want to um, give you the chance, Tracy, to, to, Talk to the parents, homeschooling parents who are wanting to pull their kids out of school because we know a lot of times special needs kids in schools are not getting what they really need. They're not getting the services. They're not getting, you know, sometimes they're being bullied. They're, there's a lot that's going on there. And so parent, but parents are afraid to homeschool because they're like, how do I do this? So how talk to the parents out there that want to homeschool their special needs um, children. What are some of the things that they can do? Okay. Awesome. So the first thing I want to say is I hear this a lot. I want to homeschool. I just can't because I, ha I, I don't have the income. I can't quit my job. I need to be, you know, working. We just can't afford it. So I get that a lot. So what a lot of people don't know is they now have what's, have what's called parent-led ABA, Applied Behavior um, Analysis, where they will actually pay you as a parent to become your very own child's therapist, where you're not having to rely on anyone else. And you can, you can get paid to do it to be your own child's behavior analyst. And so I have those resources where I can share with you how you can do it because most people are afraid to do it because I can't afford it. I can't quit my job. I want to be home with my child. I want to homeschool them. But what am I going to do when my mortgage becomes due? What am I going to do when I need to pay that car note? I have the resources available and I believe that it's so vital, especially for this particular community of people, that they have the best care. 
I always say it charity starts at home and spreads abroad. Your home is the most safest place that your child can be. And to have more resources to help you get paid, you can get paid to manage your own child's education and behavior. Our state of Florida, we have a great program that will also give you access to hundreds, actually thousands of providers that have resources to come alongside you to help you in your pursuit of homeschooling. We have those scholarships that are available. Um, I can definitely provide those resources uh, for you. But I would say, don't be afraid. It, I, I've homeschooled my children um, on two occasions, and it was the best, the very best choice that I could have made because at home is where they were able to foster, they were able to learn, they were able to grow in a safe environment. So I know it sounds scary, but there are resources available out here to help if you want to start on that journey. All right. Well, thank you so much. And you guys, if you want to um, talk with Tracy, um, Tracy has consults available. You can contact her, set up a Zoom meeting with her or a phone call with her. She has helped a lot of people in my community, my online community. I have referred people to um, Tracy. Tracy is amazing. I, I When I heard that you flew out, you flew to go help. You got on an airplane to go help a family with, yeah. with a child that has special needs. You were willing to get on a plane and go help. That was that said everything. I know you have a heart of gold. You've helped so many people at our homeschool center. Anything from, you know, I, I've seen you help kids that were dyslexic, you know, various stages on the spectrum. You have helped a lot of people that I know. And I just want to say I honor you and I appreciate your great work in our community. Um, you know, people like you are the true heroes and doing the work. And so what I'm hearing you say is parents with kids with special needs can homeschool. And there are resources out there to help them on this journey, you know. Yeah. And that's in, you know, they have to really look at their state to see what's out there. This program that you just mentioned in the very beginning, is that in every state? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, they actually just um, launched over 15 different insurance platforms that are actually helping families who want to take basically their own management for their care into their own hands and they're paying for it through their their health insurance and so a lot of the health insurances now are recognizing behavior therapy or even special needs as a code for medical billing and so this program is certainly available not just for the state of florida but for actually they're in the 50 states i checked this morning um, when i went on because i sent um this information just out to a parent this morning that's wanting to um quit her job and become a full-time at home um homeschool caregiver so and these people have very great jobs you know um with corporate America and they're wanting to still afford themselves the ability to be at home, but also to be paid. And so, yes, this program is available in the 50 States and I can certainly share that resource. Well, thank you for coming on today, Tracy. This has been so awesome um, having you here and I'm looking forward to working with you more you know, as, as we move forward into the future, how can people find you? Where can they follow you and find you and contact you? All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so if you would like to contact me, we have this great, um, form. If you just email us at T H E G E T G R P at gmail.com. That's T H E G E T G R P at gmail.com. And you can visit us on Facebook, 
we are listed in the business under global education technology. So just um, Facebook and um, phone call or um, email. All right. So again, guys, this has been my Black Home Education Podcast. This was episode one. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, share it, like it, comment. Um, we would really appreciate it if you can spread the word, you know. Um, and I do appreciate Tracy so much for coming on with me today and taking time out of her busy schedule to share with us. And guys, um, stay tuned for episode two. <laughs>